What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at the Sofa Baton X1 Smart Remote. This is an advanced universal remote control that also includes a wireless hub. If you are anyone who has a home theater, chances are you know what the Harmony remote control is. A few years ago, this was the best feature pack remote control on the market. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, Logitech decided to discontinue it and no longer has updates or support. So when I saw the Sofa Baton X1 as a new option to hit the market, I just knew I had to pick one up and check it out for myself. While something like a remote control can sound like a simple device, when you have a home theater with multiple components to control and command, things can get quite advanced. For example, right now I have my Logitech Harmony device set up so that when I say, hey, turn on Shield TV, it sends a command to my Harmony remote to turn on the projector, the Shield TV, receiver, and lastly, change it to the right channel so the Shield TV is displayed as well. Google only does the initial command, but the Harmony Hub and programming is what is responsible for the rest. Then if I say turn off Shield TV, it also turns everything off as well. This includes delays and multiple button presses, all done automatically. So as you can see, this can get pretty complicated and in-depth. Everything has to go smoothly and be programmed correctly so everything can work as intended. So today we'll be finding out just how good the Sofa Baton X1 is, how easy or hard it is to set up, and does it work as well or better than Harmony remotes. So inside the box you have the manuals, the remote itself, the hub, two USB-C power cables, one to charge the remote, the other to plug into the hub here. And lastly, two IR blasters to control your devices as well. Design-wise, this is definitely a good and modern looking remote. The buttons feel nice with a good click to them and they are also backlit as well. Unfortunately, this remote does not include a charging cradle so you do have to charge it about once a month with the included USB-C cable that plugs into here at the bottom. Hopefully in the future they release a cradle as this makes it very convenient as both a place to store it and have it being charged at all times as well. Looking at the specs, this can control Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and IR devices and supports up to 500,000 devices. This has both Google and Alexa support so you can make your commands with voice instead of the remote if you like to do that as well. So first impressions I have after turning it on is I hate the font that they use here. I think this is the worst font they could have chosen and reminds me of MS-DOS. Strangely, if you look at their advertising photos, it actually shows a nicer, more modern font. But when you actually get it, this is what you see instead. So I'm not sure why the bait and switch, but it's only a font. So hopefully with software updates, they can get this fixed so that it looks better. So setting it up was pretty simple. You simply download their app and start looking up and adding devices by name. Unlike the font on the remote, this app is very well done, looks good, and is easy to use and navigate. Fortunately, all of my devices were already listed in their library, which made my setup very quick and easy to do. I did have to manually edit the power off button for my BenQ projector as it requires the power off button to be pressed twice, but I also had to do this with the Harmony remote, so it was something I already expected. After that, you simply start programming activities where you tell the remote what and when to turn things on or off. So I set up the same activity as I have on my Harmony remote, which is turn on Shield TV. This one is not touchscreen, but you simply use the scroll wheel and click it to select the activity you want. All right, so right up here, I have my BenQ HT3550 projector. Then over here, I have my Denon AVR X3400H and my Shield TV. I also have two amplifiers over here, but those are connected to the output of the receiver here. So as soon as this one turns on, it turns on those as well. So those don't need to be programmed. So right now on the activity of turn on Shield TV, I have it to turn on my projector, then the AV receiver here, then the Shield TV, and then lastly, it changes the receiver to the right input as well. All right, so I have the dock plugged in right there. Once you have your activity set up in the remote, simply go up here to activities, click it, click the activity one more time. As you see, it just turned on my AV receiver. My projector just turned on. My AV receiver automatically turned those on. And the Shield TV is on as well. Went to the right input. And as you can see, the projector is now on. 
takes a few seconds to boot up, but right now it should show the Shield TV. And there you have it, everything working exactly how I programmed it. And then when it's time to turn it all off, as you can see, it's lit up green. So if you had multiple activities here, the ones not in use will be white and the one currently on will be green. So since that one's green, which we'll go ahead and click the off button. Projector turned off, AV receiver turned off, and then it's gonna send shortly a sleep command to the NVIDIA shield. I think I have to reprogram that one because that one is not shutting off and usually with the Harmony remote, it puts it to sleep. But with this one, it has not been doing that. But I probably just have to go into the settings and I'll reconfigure the button, then we should be good to go. As far as cons go, I think scrolling down the button list of the device is very tedious. Fortunately, these buttons also can be programmed. So for example, the power button was one I really had to scroll for. So instead, I just programmed it to the red button here. And now I can just click that instead of having to scroll through the list. With that being said, I do wish there was a dedicated power button somewhere here on the remote. Having that would make this a lot easier to use, especially when my wife or kids end up using it. And this way I won't have to explain everything. Other than that, I really don't have much else to complain about. Setup and operation is very simple and once my devices were set up, it's controlled them all perfectly with no issues. I'm definitely happy to see that there is a new advanced remote control of this kind. People like me in the home theater space use these often, so I'm glad Sofa Baton has stepped up to take the Harmony Remote's place and I look forward to see what they come out with next. Overall, I think this is a great universal remote control. If you are looking for something to automate your home theater or living room devices and put away your tons of remotes you currently use, definitely take a look at the Sofa Baton X1. Well, I think that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.